Yep, Gold Coast and St Kilda. Uh, Stephen King opened his account, 26 points. And Noah Anderson uh, led the charge there, King. He 25 disposals and a goal. I mean, he's had some year. He has, he has. And the luxuries that he was afforded, he, he capitalised on. So just have a look from clearance here. There's, there are clearances and there are clearances. So this one here, all day they were able to surge run from stoppage and get terrific uh, territorial advantage on the Saints, who weren't really engaged in the running battle, to be fair. They've been terrific most of the year, but Anderson just showed them a work rate they weren't prepared to come with. And, and it happened time and time again. It's not really about basic numbers, but it was their best performance for the year from, in terms of gaining metres from stoppage. And it's a heavily tracked uh, asset across the competition. So you can see there, he just a, he's a corridor runner. So there's his likely opponent, Sinclair and Crouch. You can pick whoever it was at the stoppage. doesn't really matter. But he's putting 80 metres on them mm. in a matter of moments. They didn't turn up the Saints. They really didn't. And I can understand why Ross was so disappointed because this has nothing to do with talent. He can talk about not having the talent at the club and he's right. But those guys didn't want to engage. They didn't want to work. He should have been used again there and he should have sliced and diced them again. So I think they've got, they've got a heavy review to have. There's, there's no doubt about that, the Saints. But I'm loving what Anderson's doing. And I think under Stephen King, they just said, boys, go and play. Yep. Take the, 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 the burden off the shoulders and just express yourself. And we, we did the game together, Joey. It, it was great to see them play like that. It was different. It was creativity. They played on more. They handled more. They re rewarded the runner when he turned up more. So they're going to be a dangerous team to play in the back half of the season. Uh, no, one, no one gives them a chance to make the eight. But you just never know when they play like this. Yep. They've got ball winners. And they've got the edges. Ben King's in horrible form, but it could come quickly. All yeah. right, I'm going to uh, open with uh, my first crack, oh, boys. Um, I'm going to talk Ken Hinckley, and I'm going to call it Any Given Sunday. I'll get to that in a minute. But I just think the Kenny novel, uh, everyone thinks they've read it. I, I just think uh, it's got a few twists and turns left in it. And we know the contract negotiations are off until August, and Gold Coast have a vacancy now. And... There's plenty of talk around Damien Hardwick, but I just want to focus on Ken and his contract and, and what it presents, because I just think, and this is my own opinion, this is not anything else, I'm not privy to where his contract negotiations are at, and I just think the fact that Ken has seen the good, bad and the ugly with Port Adelaide, and last year was ugly, this year it's fantastic, it's not good, it's great. And he knows the highs and lows, he knows what the town's like, he knows what the supporters want, and he is... Kenny Power right now. He's the superhero. So he decides his fate, whether he pushes on with Port Adelaide. And that would only look like a two-year deal. So if it turns sour and we can crystal ball as much as we want, if it turns sour at the end of next year or even mid-next year, his head's on the chopping block again. So it's been on the chopping block. 0-5 start last year. If yep. you remember, they came for Ken. He's withstood that. So he showed his worth in terms of his integrity and what he can do. And I just think the Gold Coast, in my opinion, presents such a better option for Ken as a long-term coach. He looks at two Kenny with Port. He might look at four with Gold Coast and start his challenge again. Now, contract negotiations are off until August. Who knows? They might be off until the end of the season because if I was Ken, I'd let this play out to a grand final where we anticipate they will get to. And if he wins it, that is incredible. And if he doesn't win it, he knows what he's up for. So you think Gold Coast is a better option for Ken Hinckley than Port Adelaide going forward? I definitely think Gold Coast is a better option next year for Ken Hinckley. I truly believe he has got everything out of this group and we're seeing the ceiling right now. And I know he's got young kids and they're on long-term deals, but I just think... And I'm going to bring up something. 11 years. So I did a little bit of research on coaches. So 11 years is about their expiry date at a club. So you look at Mark Thompson. So Mark Thompson, 11 years. Paul Ruse, 9. Brad Scott, 10, left uh, North Melbourne. Clarko, 17, but didn't win a final after 11 years. Bucks left at 10 years. Dimmer, 14, but didn't win a final after 11 years. And then we've got Simo and Kenny right on 11 this year. So we know the heat Simo's under with a rebuilding team. Kenny's at the top. But he's in his 11th year. So they sign him for another two. So they don't go well, and I hope they do. But I just think from a long-term coaching perspective, Gold Coast looks a better option. Most of those coaches you put there are premiership coaches. Mm. Ken's not a premiership coach. Does he have more opportunity at Port Adelaide in the next two to three years than he does with the Gold Coast? But what does success look like? If well, it's, it's premierships, Port Adelaide. If it's Well, that's it, isn't it? What's the other success? Well, the other success, if he goes to Gold Coast, he makes finals and builds that team to a premiership. Now, I, 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 that's why I'm saying stay to the end of the year. If he doesn't win it this year, it's going to be hard to win it again next year because 
They're playing great footy, but sides improve. We've seen it right where Geelong is right now. I said off the top, Geelong are coming, but they're in fifth spot. They won the flag last year. Collingwood are a runaway beast. I mean, Port might match them, but we're all saying Collingwood six weeks ago uh, got the premiership in the bag. Not that they have, but Port Adelaide are their biggest challenger right now. If he doesn't win it this year, Kenny, do you think he can win it next year with this list? Yeah, I think this, this young midfield is only getting better. You know, Butters has become a star of the competition. Rosie's already there, so they've met. Uh, Horn Francis is a kid, you know, he's just learning preparation and how to, how to train and how to live. And then he's, his football will get better over the next two to three years for sure. So right. I, I think they've got growth in the group. I'll pose a question then. They put a deadline in uh, August that they'll present something or yep. whatever the, um, they internally decide. If you were Ken Hinckley, would you say after the grand final? Uh, not, not if it's a reasonable contract. If it was a three-year deal on, on adequate money with bonuses built in, if you did win it within the three-week sort of time frame, then I don't see any reason why you'd want to leave.